Hello guys, this is Damian from forexbolt.com and welcome back to our webinar which are currently conducting for free members uh, for people that are willing to start investing in the forex market but still don't have the right education. This is the right webinar for you since we're trying to, to keep this uh, pretty simple for people that are not familiar with the forex market yet and they're not aware uh, of it. So stay with this webinar and uh, enjoy it right now. All right, now you're only left uh, with, my, uh, with my slides. This is our pretty and beautiful logo of our trading academy. And now I'm gonna leave you for 30 seconds with our disclaimer so you will have like a, a basic picture of uh, what you're doing on the financial markets because our company is 100% regulated, registered uh, in Australia. So all our courses are supported, supported by a very strong regulator, regulatory background. Yeah, the truth is that the trading on the forex market involves a very big risk. So you should always be aware of your risk limits and uh, of your bankroll and that you can totally wipe up your account in seconds if you're not applying the proper strategies. All right, now let's keep it going. As I already said, the name of the topic today is what is Forex and how to profit from currency. And today we're going to discuss the following stuff, starting from what is Forex or in exchange or FX, then we'll switch to currency pairs and pips, then we will go through Japanese candlestick charts and why are they different than the regular uh, regular line chart we're using, then we'll go to the forex market hours and what time are the forex markets open, then we'll go to how to profit from forex, how people are actually creating value out of the forex market, then we will go to successful to forex trading approach and its three components, which are the bankroll management system, the risk management system, and the trading strategy. Then we'll switch to the MetaTrader for forex trading platform, which is like maybe the most used retail forex trading platform. Then we will go to forex education and its importance. In, and during the presentation, uh, we will go through a few examples, also through a few practical examples where I will pop up my forex chart and I will be able to create something like a real demo for you of how for example I'm applying some kind of an analytic skills and some strategies. In the meantime I strongly encourage you that you participate in this presentation by using uh, either the chat or the questions uh, section. Uh, I'm constantly following these two because uh, as I already said I'm working on a couple monitors and uh, I'm working on a couple monitors and I'm able to uh, react like instantly to your questions. So feel free to ask because I know this is like a very tricky and complicated matter. So don't be ashamed. I say one more time hi to you. I see that more people are joining. That is very good. And now let's proceed with the real thing. First, we start with what is Forex. Forex, also known as FX for short is short version of foreign exchange, meaning exchange of currency. So every time somebody exchanges currency for another currency, he's conducting a forex transaction, a currency transaction. And the total daily volume of all the currency transactions all over the world, I mean, I mean for one day, equals to approximately five trillion dollars. This is daily volume every day and the biggest participants in the forex markets are governments and central banks, commercial and investment banks, separated businesses, consumers and travelers and traders speculators. So every time you go to the change and you exchange one currency for another you're part of the forex market and believe me although your transaction is like a little little drop in a whole ocean of currencies, it is still recorded on the financial markets and it's still 
has some kind of a reflection. All right, the most popular currencies traded nowadays are, of course, on first place, the euro, the dollar, the British pound, Swiss franc, Japanese yen, Australian dollar, also known as the AUD or the LC, the Canadian dollar, also known as the CAD or the Kiwi. Uh, I mean the Luni, I apologize, then the New Zealand dollar, the Chinese yuan, the Singapore dollar, etc. These are like the most popular forex pair and the most traded, uh, not pairs, but forex currencies and the most traded ones. So the thing is that currencies are trading traded in pairs, meaning that a currency has a value that is calculated in another currency. Because, for example, if you're asking for the price of the dollar, you can say, for example, hey, the price of the dollar is uh, like, uh, for example, is 0 0.80. But 0 0.80 what? Is this euro? Is this British pound? This is why forex pairs, uh, forex currencies are traded in pairs. Every pair consists of two currencies. And every forex pair consists of a base currency and a quad currency. The base currency is the first one that comes into the pair as in the example of the picture you see to the right. For example, in the euro dollar forex pair, the base currency is the dollar and the quote currency, uh, the base currency is the euro, I apologize, and the quote currency is the American dollar. And the euro dollar forex pair means what is the price of the euro in dollars. So, for example, if we say that the dollar is currently, the euro dollar is cur currently being traded at 1.12, we're saying that one euro costs 1.12 American dollars. If we, for example, uh, reverse the places of the two currencies and we quote the, the forex pair as dollar euro, this means that we're looking for the price of the dollar in euro. In this case, since the euro is currently the most, the more expensive currency, uh, the value of the dollar euro forex pair, which is upside down, the reverse version of this forex pair, would be under one. Meaning that, for example, one dollar is currently uh, exchanged approximately at the price of maybe uh, maybe 90 cents or maybe 92 cents I mean uh, euro euro cents for one dollar but in the example I give you we have euro dollar over here where the euro is the base currency the dollar is the quote currency meaning that the euro dollar for pair measures the price of the euro in American dollars so, the price fluctuations of forex pairs are expressed in pips. So, I mean the metric that measures the change of a forex pair in price is called a pip, one pip or many pips. Pip stays for price interest point. Usually, one pip equals to 0 0.0001 from the current exchange rate of a forex pair the exemption is made of forex of uh, currencies that for example uh, cost like a lot less than other currencies like the yen for example where we have the pip coming after the second decimal so one pip of the american dollar japanese yen forex pair equals to 0 0.01 because one dollar currently costs like 110 Japanese yen, approximately 110 in comparison to the euro, which costs 101.12 dollars. The yen costs like 110 dollars. This is why one pip of the yen is located at after the second uh, number after the decimal of the forex pair. For example. At the seventh point of this presentation, I give you an example. If the euro dollar goes from 1.1150 to 1.1170, we say that the price has been increased with 20 pips. So, for example, if the euro dollar moves from 1.11 to 1.12, which is like a, 
like uh, one cent, we say that the price has increased with 100 pips, which is totally logical. If the price goes up with 10 cents, we say that the price has been has increased with 1,000 pips. So one pip is located, or most of the forex pairs, is located at the fourth number uh, after the decimal. So now I will move to the charts that represent the forex pairs on the financial markets. And I will meet you with the Japanese candlestick charts. So most of you are probably familiar with the regular line chart where you simple have, simply have an, uh, an x-axis and a y-axis and you have a line that fluctuates up and down. This is the line chart. Basically, the Japanese candlestick chart has uh, pretty much the same function, but it gives a lot more information. This is a chart that consists of Japanese candlesticks, and to the right at the image, I have showed you a couple candles. The green candle represents a price increase, and the red candle represents a price decrease. If the price is increasing, we say that this is a bullish market move or a bullish candle. If the prices is decreasing, we say that this is a bearish candle or a bearish market move. So every candlestick represents a certain time period. Meaning that if you are looking at the chart, you will see many, many, many candles. And depending on your chart configuration, each candle will represent a certain time frame. And this brings me to the third point. Since you're looking at the time frame, that every Japanese candlestick gives you four kinds of information. The open price of this time period, the close price of the time period, the highest point during this time period, and the lowest point during this time period. And at the image to the right, I show, uh, I show you how uh, an increasing candle looks like and a decreasing candle looks like. The green one, which is the bullish candle, the increasing candle, and the red candle, which is the bearish candle, the decreasing candle. Notice that the open of the period of the green candle is located at the bottom of the body, as it is written with green to the right. The bottom of the body. The close of the period is located at the top of the body. The high point of the period is located at the upper candle wick over here, this uh, like green line above the green candle. And the, clo uh, the lowest point of this candle is located below the body at the top, at the tip of the lower candle wick. It works absolutely the same way with the bearish candle, but everything is upside down. I mean the open and the close. Since a period is starting on the chart and the period is bearish, meaning that the price is decreasing. The open is at the top of the candle body and the close is below at the lower side of the candle body because the price has opened high and has went low and has closed low. So the open is high and the close is low, upside down. But uh, the lowest point of this period is also located at the lower part of the candle body expressed by the tip of the lower candle wick and the high of the period is expressed with the upper candle wick and its tip which is located above the candle body. So now I will switch to the next image which will give you an example of how a Japanese chart, a Japanese candlestick chart looks like. Here it is. These are candles, but in my case I use a uh, black candles for price increase and white candles for price decrease because this is the basic uh, this is the default configuration of my platform so whatever you see a black candle this is a price increase whatever you see a white candle this is a price decrease and notice a candle is a uh, is open then another one comes when the candles are black the open of a candle is the close of the previous candle when a bearish candle is coming, the close of the bullish candle is again the beginning of the bearish candle. However, the close of a bearish candle, meaning a white candle, is located below 
the close of the previous candle that was bullish. Notice, for example, uh, at the right side of this chart, you see a couple candles that are relatively big. The, big, the two big white candles. Notice that they come after a bullish candle, and the end of the bullish candle, the black candle, is the beginning of the first bearish candle that is big. It even goes very low, and when it closes, we see from the same level that the price opens another period that where the open of this period is located at the close of the previous period. So they pretty much slightly overlap and the opens and the closes of each candles are like approximately at the same level. Uh, also I would like to tell you that this is the daily chart of the British Pound American Dollar Forex pair. Meaning that this chart represents the price of the British Pound, the British Lira, expressed in American dollars. Since the, the chart is daily, every candle of this chart represents one single day. So the beginning of this chart starts approximately at May 2013 and the end of the chart goes until July 2013. So this is like how many months? About between three and four months are visualized on this chart. Notice that the highest point on the chart is located approximately at 1.5750 approximately. And the lowest point of the chart is located approximately at 1.47 uh, at 1.48 approximately. So we have more people joining to the webinar. I'm very happy to see you guys. I remind one more time, if you have any kind of questions, do not hesitate to ask at any time using the chat or the questions, the questions section, uh, because I'm constantly looking at these two. Uh, I'm using a couple monitors, so I pretty much have, <laughs> uh, have them in front of me, and I will uh, instantly reply to all your questions in the webinar using my mic. Uh, also, if you want, feel free to share this webinar somewhere in the social network so we will get more people like attending and joining. I believe it's going to be very useful for a lot of people. And now let me switch to the Forex market hours because as every market, the Forex market opens at some point and closes <laughs> in some other time. And now I will show you when this time is coming. So the most important thing you should know is that the Forex market is open 24 hours a day, five days in the week, from Monday to fr Friday. The trading in the trading week, in each trading week, starts with the beginning of the workday in Sydney, and the trade, the Forex trading week, finishes with the end of the workday in New York, or in America in general. So. Below, you're seeing a picture that visualizes how the time and the market openings and closes are, are like distributed during the day. Notice that the time starts from 1, to, from 1 a.m. to 12 p.m. And this time is expressed in uh, Eastern American time, for example, the New York time. And notice that we have, for example, uh, in the beginning of the week, the trading session in Sydney starts at 5 p.m. American time. This is American time, Eastern American time, East Coast time. Then it's seven, in 7 p.m. Eastern American time, we have the, the Tokyo market opening. Then in, one, in 2 a.m. American time, the market in Sydney closes. Then in 3 a.m. American time, the market in London gets open. In 4 a.m., the market in Tokyo closes. In the meantime, in 8 a.m. at the morning, because we're like approaching this situation in uh, American time, in 8 a.m. New York time, we have the New York Stock Exchange opening and the opening of the, the market in New York, 8 a.m., then in 11 a.m. American time, we have the, the closing of the London 
of the London market and in 5 p.m. we have the end of the trading day in New York. So as you see there are some market overlaps, important market overlaps. The first one is for example the overlap of uh, Sydney and Tokyo which is from 7 p.m. American time to 2 a.m. American time. Then we have a one hour overlap from 3 to 4 a.m. American time, an overlap between Tokyo and London. Then London is by itself for like four hours. And then we have the London, New York market overlap, which starts from 8 o'clock to 11 o'clock. So when we're saying London, since London is like one, only one hour ahead of the whole, like Europe, the, the euro dollar is very volatile in the New York London market overlap, which is a totally logical since like these markets are open and people are constantly exchanging currencies during their workday, financial institutions, banks, etc. They make transactions and stuff. So this is when the Forex market is creating like most of its volume between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. American time. Alright, now let me give you some more details about the time zones. This is like a like a pretty brief cheat sheet that you can use about the time zones and when the markets are open and the markets are closed. We start first with, uh, as I said, I already mentioned the times like uh, com conform to the American time, but for example, Sydney opens at 6 p.m. American time, closes at 3 a.m. American time, then Tokyo at 7 p.m., closing at 4 a.m. Everything is EDT, American, Eastern American time, Eastern time. Then we have London at 3 a.m., closing at 12 p.m. New York opens at 8 a.m., closes at 5 p.m. This is the summer time, and in GMT, there are like 10 p.m., 7 a.m., 11 p.m., 8 a.m., 7 a.m., 4 p.m., 12 p.m., 9 p.m respectively Sydney, Tokyo, London and New York. The winter time there are slight differences because as you know uh, um, countries are moving like uh, their clocks uh, with one hour which reflects the trading time on the forex market. In winter Sydney opens at 4 p.m. American time, closes at 1 a.m. Tokyo opens at 6 p.m. closes at 3 a.m. London opens at 3 a.m. closes at 12 p.m. New York opens at 8 a.m., closes at 5 p.m. And in GMT, Greenwich Meridian Time, Sydney opens at 9 p.m., closes at 6 a.m., Tokyo opens at 11 p.m., closes at 8 a.m., London opens at 8 a.m., closes at 5 p.m., New York opens at 1 p.m., closes at 10 p.m. And uh, this is a very useful information because you can keep an eye on it constantly and be familiar with what time the markets open and close and for example when are the overlaps coming. Now I will tell you how to profit from the forex market. It's very simple like black on white on paper but uh, just to bring you the picture the point is to buy a currency pair low and to sell it high and to profit from the difference uh, between the, your, your entry point and your exit point of your trade. If you buy something at 1.1 and sell it at 1.2, you're making 0.1 on every one you have bought. So it's the same in the opposite direction. You can actually short sell high and buy low, meaning that you can pretty much sell a currency pair without owning it and buy it back low, which is like the, the biggest benefit of the Forex market. This is a simple chart example where I show you something. For example, take a look at this. This is again the daily chart of the British pound American dollar for expert, where as we said, one candle equals to one day. And here we have like a lot of candles, which means that uh, the chart you're currently looking at takes uh, like a pretty long period from August 2013 to October 2013, something like a couple of months. Notice that the price in the beginning of the chart we have that little small 
price decrease that reaches approximately 1.55 American dollars for one British pound. Then the price reaches this level, bounces in bullish direction, in bounces in bullish direction, meaning that the price starts to increase. I'm sorry that I'm using the, like a forex language. <laughs> um, the price bounces upward and starts an increase. The increase goes to 1.6220, which is approximately 720 pips. The difference between 1.55 to 1.6220 is 720 pips. And this increase equal to approximately 4.65%. Absolutely. <coughs> I apologize. So imagine if you have bought the American do uh, the British pound American dollar for pair at 1.55 and you, then you have sold it at 1.6220. This means that you would have been able to profit 720 pips that equals to approximately 4.65% increase in value of this forex pair. Meaning that if you invest, for example, let's say, let, let's say you invest uh, $10,000 in this trade, this means that you will be able to make $465 pure profit from this trade. For how many times? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 days. However, things are not that easy on the financial markets. And honestly, you're probably now thinking $465 for 22 days of trading is nothing. And yes, you're partly, you will be right. Because there are some other stuff that Forex traders use in order to be able to create more profit. And now I will show you some information about what forex traders are using to create more and more profit when trading on the financial market. First, this brings three questions in your mind probably. Where to get money for trading? How to know where to enter the market? And how to know for how long to hold a trade? Absolutely, this is the, like, the skill of knowing how to be positioned and how to profit on the financial market. These three questions are very crucial and honestly no forex trader will be able to give you like a hundred percent answer to this question because nothing is hundred percent sure on the forex market and nobody can tell you exactly what is going to happen on the forex market however people people can pretty much assume what can happen in the forex market and could try to bring the odds in their favor because forex trading is pretty much a game of skill and odds. Although you cannot be 100% correct every time, the important thing is to be more of a winner rather than a loser. And now this is what I'm going to talk about. A successful forex trading approach has three basic components. The first one is a proper bank pro management system. The second is risk management system and a good risk management skills. And the third very important component of every successful forex trading approach is the analysis and the trading strategy. Now I'm going to say some stuff about the bankroll and the risk management rules. The first thing I'm going to talk about is leverage. The leverage is a service that your Forex broker will offer you in order to be able to make more money on your trades. Meaning that if a Forex broker offers you a leverage of 1 to 100, for example, which is in my opinion decent, uh, this means that if you are able to invest 
$1,000 in a trade, your broker will multiply this money with 100, meaning that you will be uh, you will have a buying power of $100,000 only with your $1,000 in your bankroll. This is 1 to 100. If the broker is offering you 1 to 50 leverage, this means that the broker is willing to multiply your investing, your investment by 50. So if you're willing to invest $1,000 in a single trade, your broker will multiply this amount by 50, giving you a buying power of $50,000. Although this sounds like pretty lucrative and very like uh, interesting in terms of, wow, how much money I can make just in seconds, don't think that way because since you're able to profit faster on a faster pace and more intensively, at the same time you're losing on the same pace. And if your bankroll is, for example, $5,000, let's say, you're going to, if the trade is going in your favor, you're going to profit very fast and you're going to profit more and more. But when you are losing and the trade is against you, you're losing only from the bankroll you're having. That's $5,000 in your bankroll. And since the leverage gives you the opportunity to profit faster, it also can put you in a very big danger because you're also able to lose faster in case the trade goes against you. Therefore, I will introduce to you the second point of this slide, which is the 1% rule. So the fat books and most of the traders will tell you something very important. And this is never risk more than 1% of your bankroll in a single trade. And this is totally adequate and I will recommend you to always follow this rule. 1%. So if you have a bankroll of $10,000, 1% of $10,000 equals $200. Meaning that you should not risk more than $100 in your trade. Never risk more than $100 in your trade if you're trading with $10,000 bankroll. If your bankroll is like only $1,000, you should never risk more than $10 in a single trade. If you follow this rule, this means that you will be having something like 100 attempts until you bankrupt. And this is very important in Forex trading because the many attempts are neglecting the luck factor when trading. I assume that this is probably very hard uh, for you to understand, but I repeat one more time. If you have any questions, feel free to use the question section or the chat to ask, and I will instantly respond to your question uh, during the presentation. There is a very useful tool that is, uh, that is present in every Forex trading platform online, and this is the stop loss order. Traders use the stop loss order to control their risk in every trade. Meaning that if you have a chart and you buy, for example, a Forex pair, you can set a certain default level on the chart, which will be even visualized with a horizontal line, where if the price crosses this level, the trade will be instantly closed. Uh, automatically it will be automatically closed meaning that you're pretty much limiting the risk with this line with this stop loss order so if you buy for example at 1.1250 uh, you can put a stop loss order at 1.12 meaning that you're limiting your risk to 50 pips and now I will do a sample calculation for you that is actually visible on the slide which will probably give you a better picture of how to implement a successful bankroll and risk management strategy in Forex trading. Again, let's say we have a bankroll account of $10,000, a sample bank bankroll account, $10,000, and your broker is giving you a leverage of 1 to 50, meaning that your investment will be multiplied by 50 every time you open a trade. So, 
according to your bankroll management system, you're willing to invest 25% of your bank in every trade with a 1% risk. And now I will explain what I mean with this. If you invest 25% from your bank in a single trade, this means that you're investing $2,500 in each trade, right? Because 25% out of $10,000 is $2,500 in each trade. However, your broker is giving you 1 to 50 leverage, meaning that your investment of $2,500 is multiplied by 50, meaning that you will be having a buying power of 1, $125,000 uh, uh, $125, for each trade because we multiply 2,500 by 50, which gives you a result of $125,000 in each trade you will be able to put, although you have only a $10,000 backlog. This is after the leverage. So, you decide to use the 1% risk rule, meaning that you're not willing to risk more than $100 in each of your trade. How are you going to do this? So, since you're investing 125,000 buying power in each of your trades, you need to calculate what percentage are the $100 out of this $125,000. Meaning that you need to divide 100 by 125,000 and you will get your risk limits for your trade. I repeat one more time. You're willing to risk not more than 1% from your $10,000 bankroll. This means that you need to limit your risk to $100. However, you're investing $125,000 in each trade. This means you need to find what part is 100 from $125,000. And in our case, this is 0.08%, meaning that your stop loss order should be located at 0.08% from your entry price on the chart. So, take a look at the bold text at the bottom. If you buy the euro dollar at 1.1520, you need to put a stop loss order at 1.1511 if you are following all the rules we said above, because uh, 1.1511 is at 0.08% distance from 1.1520. And to check this, I am going to now pop up a calculator for you. Here it is. All right. The difference between 1.1511 15, 20, and 1.1511 is this in terms of pips 0 0.0009 pips difference between your enterprise and your stop loss order. And when you divide this number by the entry price, 1.1511. 1520. This is the result. 0 0.0007812. When we multiply this with 100, we get the resulting percentage, which is 0 0.078125, which is approximately 0.08% after rounding. I'm going to do one more calculation so I will like create a better picture for you. All right, I'm, I'm going to go through the, the whole sample using the calculator. So, we have a $10,000 bankroll, and we're willing to invest $2,500 in each trade. Whoops, here it is, $2,500 in each trade. Since the broker gives us a 50, 1 to 50 leverage, we multiply this by 50 to get our adequate buying power. This is the buying power, $125,000. All right but we're not willing to risk more than $100 in each trade, right? We don't want to risk more than $100 from a trade. 
because we want to follow the 1% rule. This means that we need to limit our, limit our risk to $100 with the stop loss order of our trading platform. So we get 100 because uh, we're actually, when we're on loss and when we're losing, we're losing from our bankroll. And we want to limit this loss to $100 in case we're losers in the trade. We get 100 and we divide it by 125,000 in order to see what percentage is 100 from 125,000. And it is, here it is, 0 0.008. And this is not percentage, this is like a, uh, bef the number before turning it into a percentage. To turn this number into a percentage, you need to multiply it by 100, getting a result of 0 0.08% of 125,000 uh, dollars. This means that if you enter at 1.1520, you need to put your stop loss at 1.5011. I hope you're now getting it. If, if you're not understanding something, I repeat one more time, feel free to ask at any time, and I would love to explain further. Forex analysis. This is like the other very important component when trading. The analysis is the way you approach Forex charts and situations on the chart. There are two types of analysis in Forex. The technical analysis, and the fundamental analysis. The technical analysis examines the previous price action and fluctuations on the chart. Meaning that the technical analysis is based on basically what the candles are doing on the chart. What was the price in the past? Uh, what was the price in the past two days, in the past one week, or in the past month? Where are the highest point, the lowest points? And then traders try to create strategies and to make decisions based on the past of the price action and to discover tendencies. The technical analysis in Forex trading includes various trading indicators and patterns on the chart. In comparison, the fundamental analysis uh, addresses the economic, uh, the addresses the economic point of view of the separate economies. The fundamental analysis examines the separate economies uh, that represents the respective currencies. It examines the economic indicators of that country, and it also examines the news releases and the press conferences. For example, I will give you like uh, uh, I will give you few examples of uh, of some economic indicators. For example, gross domestic products, unemployment rate, trade balance of a country, etc., etc. Fundamental analysts try to understand what is the current economic situation in a country. And then when they perform their analysis, they create a strategy and they make decisions what is going to happen with the respective currency of that country. And when you're approaching a forex pair, this means you should approach two currencies, meaning that you need to identify two separate economies. So if you're trading the euro dollar for its pair, you need to approach the European Union, the Eurozone, and the economy of America. Forex strategy. After you create an analysis, you need to create a strategy. This is like this is like your weapon in trading. If you don't have a strategy in forex trading, this means you're going uh, with a knife into a gunfight. That is not a good thing. <laughs> that means you're not prepared. Therefore, you should build your strategy and you should make sure that it works. And now I will show you some stuff about your forex strategy and what you should do when you're creating a forex strategy. First, your forex strategy should suggest an entry conditions should have something like a signal that tells you, hey, enter the market at this point. Contrary to this, your Forex strategy should also suggest you exit conditions. In what conditions you should hold and when you should close a certain trade. Also, your Forex strategy should be 100% conform to your bankroll and risk management rules that we discussed in the previous two slides. Your forex strategy should also be well tested 
and it should be proven that it is like that it has a certain success rate meaning that for example if your forex strategy has a 60% success rate this means that out of 100 trades you will have 60 trades where you have achieved your target and 40 trades where you have not achieved your target this is like a forex strategy with success rate if your forex strategy has 55% success rate this means that out of 100 trades you will approximately profit in 55 trades and you will be losing like in 45 trades and the thing is to be more of a winner rather than a loser but there is one very important component that is related to success rate in forex trading and this is the win loss ratio of each of your trades although your strategy has a certain success rate it also has a win loss ratio this considers your target and your risk management rules so as we said for example uh, about the 1% rule you're risking 1% of your bankroll in your trade however with this risk you're aiming for a specific target right meaning that if you're aiming in every trade to generate a 2% profit while risking only 1% you're having 2 to 1 win loss ratio meaning that when you're risking 1% every time you're aiming for 2% if you're for example aiming for a 3 to 1 win loss ratio this means that with your strategy you're aiming to get like 3% with risking 1% or maybe another 3 to 1 win loss ratio strategy will be if you are aiming to get 1.5% with risking only 0.5% and this is how it works however when you're like building your win-loss approach for forex trading it should be adequate all the time it should be conformed to the time you're willing to take with your trade because for example one to uh, for example 100 to 1 win-loss ratio is not very adequate win-loss ratio because you're willing to risk only one to profit 100 and this is not something that sounds like reasonable in my opinion Now let's go to the next slide that suggests a forex strategy example. Again, let's use the example of the of bankroll of ten thousand dollars. The leverage which we are using, for example, is one to fifty, and the investment is again two thousand and five hundred dollars from our bankroll in every trade. At the same time, we will be following the one percent rule in each of our trades meaning that we're not gonna risk more than one hundred dollars for the trade and then we're gonna set a target for two percent on the chart meaning that we're aiming if we're risking one hundred dollars we're aiming for a minimum return of two hundred dollars in each trade this is a win-loss ratio of two to one let's say our strategy success rate is 60 percent and now let's calculate what's going to happen in 100 trades if you're using this strategy that you previously checked that it is a successful strategy and this is the way it should work in 60 trades which is like 60 percent of the cases the 60 percent success rate you will profit 200 dollars which is the two percent target in 40 percent of the trades which is like 40 trades you will lose $100 meaning that the 60 trades will bring you a profit of 60 times 200 which is $12,000 and the 40% losing trades the 40 trades will bring you every time $100 loss which when multiplied by 100 creates $4,000 this means that this strategy if you manage to build that kind of a strategy in every hundred trades with this system you will win twelve thousand dollars and you will lose four thousand dollars and the difference between your plot profit and your loss is your net profit which is eight thousand dollars twelve thousand dollars minus four thousand dollars 
Now let's approach another example. Again, we use the $10,000 bankroll, 1 to 50 leverage, uh, the investment in each rate of $2,500, which is 25%, with 1% risk, which means that we're now risking more than $100. The target will be set at 2%, which means that we're aiming for a minimum return of $200, which creates a 2 to 1 win loss ratio. Now let's see what happens if the strategy success rate is below 50% with a win loss ratio of 2 to 1. Let's take again 100 trades example. Since our success rate is now low, like 40%, this means that out of 100 trades, we will have only 40 successful trades. In each of these trades, we will profit $200, which is the 2% target. In 60 trades, which is like 60%, we will be losing like $100, right? Which is the 1% risk. So this means that 40 trades times $200 make $8,000 profit from 40 trades. And, um, and 60 losing trades, where we lose $100 each, equals to $6,000. When we get the difference between the profit of $8,000 and the loss of $6,000, we get a net profit of $2,000 from this strategy. So what does this mean? Even if we're losing from our trade, like in most of the cases, the trade is unsuccessful, we can still be profitable with a proper win-loss ratio. That is true. This is the mathematics. Because although in more than 50% of the trades where like the trades are unsuccessful, our risk management system has limited the risk to 1%. So in my opinion, if you're risking 1 to get 2, it is totally normal that your success rate is less than 50%. The point is, when you create this calculation, which is shown in the bottom, the point is to get a positive net profit. And this is what Forex trading is about. In this case, you need to be right when trading Forex only 40% of the time, and so you will still be profitable. Absolutely. Totally. Which means that uh, your break even from this trade is located, for example, somewhere at 35% maybe. If the, if the success rate of this strategy is 35%, this means that we're going to have like 35 winning trades, and I'm currently calculating this on my mind, uh, 35 winning trades and 65 losing trades, meaning that in 35 trades you will profit uh, $200 in each, which is $7,000 group profit, and in, in 65 trades uh, you will be losing like hundred dollars in each trade which is six thousand and five hundred dollars loss from these trades and still there is five hundred dollars difference meaning that if your success rate is 35 percent uh, you will still be able to profit five hundred dollars from hundred trades meaning that the break-even count probably at 33.33 percent .33%, which is approximately one-third now let me tell you some stuff about technical analysis that you will help you with your forex strategy. Some of the most important technical analysis indicators are support and resistance, trend lines, channels, chart patterns, and candles. And I will give you like few words about each of these very briefly, and then later in the presentation I will do some practical examples to you with popping up my chart, which will help you understand this in a better way. So, support and resistance levels are levels that the price approaches while increasing or decreasing. So, if, for example, the price is increasing and it reaches a level which it is not able to break, and the price is simply hitting the level, goes down, hitting the level, goes down, hitting the level, goes down. This means that the price is hitting a resistance level. So, when the price is hitting a level from below, increasing and hits the level from the lower side, we say that the price is hitting a resistance level. When the price is decreasing and it is hitting a level from above, meaning that the price drops, hits a level, then increases, drops again, hits the same level, increases, drops again, hits the same level. This means that the price has reached a support level. So, supports 
are levels located below the price and resistance are levels located above the price. So trend lines are indicators that this is simply a line that you stretch along the price action. So if you see that the price is increasing, for example, with a, with a certain consistency and its move is pretty consistent, you can pretty much draw a line through that move and you will notice that the price is hitting this line and then increases again. Draws back to the line, increases again. Draws back to the line, increases again. This means that the price is hitting the trend line. The channel is absolutely the same as the trend line. However, the channel also have another level which is located at the other part, at the other side of the price action. So the channel consists of two symmetrical lines that go through the tops and through the bottoms of the price action. Chart patterns are separate figures that could be found on the chart. For example, uh, chart patterns are like special occurrences that represent some kind of altitude of the market participants. If you spot a certain figure on the chart, uh, you will assume that the price will make a certain move. Candle patterns are absolutely the same like chart patterns, however, Candle patterns refer to a single candle or a group of two, three, or even four candles. While chart patterns usually involve many candles on the chart. <clears throat> and now let's do some practical examples about this. Now I'm popping up my chart. Here it is. This is my chart. This is the platform I'm using, the famous MetaTrader 4 platform. And these are the Japanese candlesticks, the black and the white ones. Now we'll try to open like a clean line, a clean chart I mean, because I create a lot of drawings like over here. Now I'm going to erase most of the stuff from my chart so I will be able to visualize stuff in a better way for you. And I will switch to a daily chart where every candle on the chart represents one separate day. Here it is, the chart. So, the first thing I see is that the euro dollar has been following a channel that has bullish inclination, meaning that the channel is going upward. Here it is. These are the tops. The first top, the second top, and the third top that helped me build this channel. And these are the bottoms that helped me build the lower level of the channel. Here it is. This is a channel that is bullish in forex trading, meaning that the channel is inclined upward. Then we have a channel breakout over here, meaning that the price has increased and showed intentions to increase with higher intensity, which brings us to the today's case. But let's get back to the past a little bit and see what this channel is telling us. Notice that the price has created the first point of the channel over here. Here it is. Then came the second point of the channel over here. Then we have the third point of the channel over here. And now we got the, the fourth point of the channel came over here. All right. Now let's say, let's say that we have not identified the channel yet. And the channel is gone. It's not, it's, it's not visible on the chart. And we have, for example, the chart until here. Here it is. This is what we have. So now we build the lower level of the channel. And we're at the same time building the upper level of the channel through the tops. Here it is. And we notice that there is a pretty much symmetric pattern between the tops and the bottoms, meaning that the tops and the bottoms on the chart come with the same intensity. Because since we have couple tops and couple bottoms, this help us create couple rays, upper and lower, 
And since we identify them as symmetrical, we can assume that the price is going to bounce from this level and we'll seek another interaction with the lower level of the channel, like it did in the past two times. This is why we can stretch the upper and the lower level of the channel. We can sell the euro dollar forex pair in the time of the bounce, the downward bounce, which appeared over here. The price touched the channel, the price bounced in bearish direction. For example, we sell at 1.0. One point zero eight ten, and we hold until the price reaches the lower level of the channel at one point zero five seventy eight. All right. So now I will pop up my calculator again to see how this looks like. All right. As I said, whoops. As I said, we sell at one point zero eight ten. 1.0810 and we close the trade at 1.0578 which means that this trade generates profit of 0 0.0232 which is 232 pips this is the distance that the price goes during our trade until the price reaches the lower level of the trade. We spotted the bounce from the upper level of the channel. We sold the euro dollar forex pair and we closed the trade when the price reached the lower level of the channel. Pretty logical, don't you think? And now let's divide this number by our entry price in order to see the move expressed with a percentage. Our entry price was 1.0810. We get a result of 0 0.0214616, etc., etc. When we multiply this number by 100, we get the percentage move of the price downward, which is 2.15% profit from this trade, meaning that. According to our like sample $10,000 bankroll with the 25% investing rule and the 1% risk means that if we have invested uh, yeah, $2,500 in the trade with the leverage 1 to 50, we multiply by 50. This means that we would have invested 1020 uh, one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, and if we generate two point fifteen percent of this trade, we'll generate a profit that equals to, as I said, two point fifty percent equals to zero point zero two fifteen. So I will multiply this number by zero point zero two fifteen, which is uh, like two point fifteen percent. Now we'll get the pure profit from this trade. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> $2,687. However, this is a trade that takes a lot of time. It is a big trade. And uh, since you are aiming for, for this amount, uh, you will not be able to implement this trade with the 1% rule if you're using leverage because the 1% rule on our like $10,000 bankroll that we suggested uh, and the 1 to 50 leverage and the 200 uh, and the $2,500 investment suggests that we set our stop loss order on 0.08% above the entry point and in our case we will not be able to do this since the price is pretty volatile and you in order to be able to profit that much you will need to risk uh, quite more than what we suggested in the previous strategy. But this will, this pretty much, I mean, uh, helps you get the picture. So now let me switch to some smaller chart. For example, let's say the 15 minute chart. This is again the Euro dollar forex pair, but this time each candle equals to 15 minutes. 
And when, one, when I zoom out the chart, like here it is, you see the components of our trade that we implemented like uh, a minute ago, but these are like pretty much zoomed in because since we're using more candles to visualize a period, it takes more space on the chart. And now we switch to the current situation of the euro dollar for its pair on the 15 minute chart, as I said. Okay, and now I am getting back into the past and I'm trying to discover something like a pattern for you, maybe. Or let's use the one hour chart. Yeah, one hour chart is great. Here it is. And I just discovered a pattern. Notice that the price has been increasing over here. Price increase, here it is. Another increase another increase, another increase. Notice that the increase happens with a like a relative consistency. Don't you think? This means that we can stretch a trend line through the bottoms of the price. Here it is. This is a bullish trend line, meaning that a trend line that follows a price increase on the chart. We have a price increase that we measure with this bullish trend line. Notice that the price touches the trend and then increases. Then we have another touch of the trend, the price increases. A third interaction with the trend comes, the price increases again. Then the price breaks the trend, creating a breakout. Here it is. The price breaks the trend over here, creates a breakout. And then as you see, the price is like, it looks like it started a decrease, don't you think? See, the tops are lower, the bottoms are lower too, in comparison to the previous case where the tops and the bottoms are, are higher. This time the tops and the bottoms are lower. Probably the price has interrupted the trend in order to create a move in the opposite direction. And since this bearish channel I just built, got broken through the upper level, this might be the beginning of another new price increase. You never know. Now let me show you some other component. Yeah, something about support and resistance, for example, because probably this created a lot of, uh, a lot of thoughts in your mind, so I'm erasing everything from the chart, and I'll switch to a bigger chart, for example, the weekly chart. Now, the weekly chart means that every candle on the chart represents one week. And I'm switching to this chart because I notice uh, a famous approach on the euro dollar chart, which shows that during the past couple of years, the price has been demonstrating a specific altitude. Notice that during the, because here, where I'm pointing over here, this is uh, February 2015. The date is February 2015. And this is the, the nowadays, the today thing. And this is like uh, today we are um, 31st of May. Meaning that this chart, this move of the price is covering like covers like a couple years. Exactly. Notice that the tops of the price action demonstrate a very interesting consistency. The price increases, reaches a certain level, then drops. Then reaches the level again, drops again. Then reaches the level again, drops, drops lower, reaches that level again, and then it drops again. And this happens like pretty close in the area of 1.15 exactly. Notice that 1.15 is a round number. Here it is, 1.15, price reaches 1.15, decreases, reaches 1.15, decreases. Why is this? So, since 1.15 is a round number level on the chart, and it is like pretty round because it is like an important level on the chart, we say that this is a level that has psychological factor on the chart. This means that when market participants in Forex trading see that the price reaches this level, they change their altitude. Since it's a round number, people tend to make decisions related to this level. When, for example, the price reaches 1.15, a lot of uh, 
investors will say, nah, it will not go higher, and then will immediately close their trades, creating creating a demand for the opposite condition on the chart. And we notice the absolutely the same approach with the bottoms on the price. Take a look, the price decreases, reaches a certain level, then goes up back. Decreases again, reaches the same level, then goes up again. Then decreases again, reaches that level, goes up again. Let's mark this level too. Is it a round number? Yep, absolutely. 1.05. Here it is. Price touches this level, bounce in bullish direction. Touches 1.5 again, bounce in bullish direction. Touches 1.5 again, even goes slightly below 1.5, but still is in the area of the 1.5 level. And it increases again. And since the price is creating this, we assume that soon we might have another interaction with 1.50 and over here. You never know. But why am I saying all of this? Because the interesting thing is that the 1.15 level over here acts as a resistance and the 1.05 level acts as a support. So when the price touches the 1.15 level from below, it is testing 1.15 as a resistance. When the price is touching 1.5 from above, it is testing it as a support. And this is the most important thing of the support and resistance trade. When you're trading using support, resistance, or trend lines or channels, these levels pretty much give you suggestions where to enter or where to exit the market. Take a look over here, for example. Since the price touched the 1.05 level again and bounced in bullish direction, this pretty much tells us, hey, the price is probably doing what it did during the past two years, and it might start an increase. So this is a very nice opportunity to buy the euro dollar and maybe to trade until the price reaches the upper level of this horizontal channel at 1.15. Absolutely. And this is how money are made on the forex market. But now let's get back to our presentation. I will now tell you a few stuff about the fundamental analysis, which is the the, the twin brother of the technical analysis. Since technical analysis approaches charts, it is based uh, basically on creating drawings or using indicators on the chart. And the fundamental analysis, as I said, it approaches separate economies that are represented by currencies. In this relation, some of the most indicators from the fundamental analysis are the interest rates of countries and the interest rate decisions, the employment data of a country, the gross domestic pro product of a country, the inflation reports of a country. You should also follow the press conferences of the central bank that represents these countries. For example, in America, this is the, the Federal Reserve uh, with, a, with a director, uh, Janet Yellen. And in the European Union, Union, this is the European Central Bank with a director, Mario Draghi. Also, you should follow the political situations in countries because political situations in countries tend to affect the currency of this respective country. So if something bad happens in a country, we are very likely to see a decrease in the exchange rate of its currency. And it is absolutely the same with the economic situation. If a country is near a bankruptcy, uh, we are very likely to see its currency going like down to, a, to impossible levels. Or if a country is doing very well in terms of politics and economy and for example unemployment is very low the gross domestic product is very high the inflation is kept under control and everything works well we're very likely to see the currency of this country like being strong and picking up and now i will give you some examples with a recent fundamental analysis events on the chart and the first thing i'm going to start with is the british pound american dollar chart why am I using this chart? What important thing did happen in the UK during the last year? I will tell you. Going to a bigger chart, let's use a weekly chart or a daily chart where every candle is one day. All right, here it is. We see a regular chart. Here it is. The price is moving, fluctuating, but when we go to the past, as I said, every candle of this daily chart represents one day, one single day. Hey, but what happened over here? Take a look at this huge candle. 
in June. What happened over here? Why did the British pound drop so much versus the dollar? And not only versus the dollar, versus all the other Forex major pairs. It dropped because the, uh, the people that live in the United Kingdom decided to leave the European Union. And this was the day of the Brexit referendum. When the results were announced, we saw a tremendous drop of the British pound versus most of the other currencies. And in our case, the price of the British pound dropped from, take a look that I'm currently measuring the size of that move, from 1.5014 dollars for one British pound to 1.3216, which is a difference of 1,798 pips, or 0 0.17 in value. And when I divide this number by the beginning of the drop at 1.5018 or 1.50, 1.5020, for example, not sure exactly what I what I used. I get a result of 0 0.1560. Let me use the other calculator because I also have a, a physical calculator too. So I get a result of 0 0.1576. Yeah, I'm currently typing it up. However, in order to turn this number into a percentage, you need to multiply it by 100. Meaning that for only one day, British pound, the British pound, the sterling, the lira, the British lira lost about 50, lost about 15.60 percent of its value, and this happened only for one day. So I can guarantee you that a lot of people made a lot of money in this day. But these are only the people that know what are what are they doing. Another interesting thing I can tell you. Take a look at this. It's like twenty uh, fourth of June. I want to show you one more thing. Let's take a look at the gold chart. This is the gold chart, the chart of the gold. Let's see how the gold reacts to to the Brexit decision from 26th of June or 24th of June, not sure. Uh, okay. 2016, trying to find it on the chart. Oh, here it is. 24th of June. Going back to the British pound American dollar. Here it is. Look at the bottom of the cursor over here. 24th of June. Going back to the gold. 24th of June. The gold increased in the exact same moment. Why is that? Simple. Because since the lira, the British pound, was dropping, a lot of people lost their trust in this currency. And they abandoned it <laughs> and they invested their money in gold. This is why a lot of people bought gold and the gold appreciated in value. Simple. And this is how you can use such economic situations to turn them into your favor. And now I will show you something with the Swiss franc. Very interesting. Something that appeared, I believe, on January 15, 2015. Going to the daily chart again. Let me clean that chart for you. Here it is. Uh, currently, I'm looking at September 2016. Let's go back to the past. <coughs> Whoops. What is this? A huge bearish candle, even bigger than the... <laughs> the British pound situation. What is this over here? Why did the Swiss franc appreciate it so drastically versus the American dollar only for one day? From 1.0234, I'm typing it down, 1.0234, 0234, here it is for example. 1.0, all right, 1.040, 1 let's use a round number. 1.0240, 1 
Two, take a look where the lower candle wick goes. This means that this is the lowest point of the day. It reads 0 0.7474.20. Minus 0 0.7420. What is the difference? Again, 2,000, uh, 2,820 pips or 0 0.2820, the difference. And when we divide this number by the beginning of the drop at uh, 1.0240, We get a result of 0 0.2753, and by multiplying this number by 100, we will get the percentage uh, increase of the Swiss franc versus the American dollar in this case. 27.5% move only for one day. What did happen at this date? Probably you guys don't know, but this is when the Swiss National Bank announced negative interest rates on deposits in the country at uh, I think there were like minus 0 0.75 which uh, on theory means that if you deposit money over there you're not gonna profit but you're gonna pay like uh, 0 0.75 percent on your deposit you're going to pay not going to like make money and interest rates decisions are very important. Why are they important? Because they're related to the spending in the country. When credits are expensive, meaning that, uh, for example, you need to pay very high interest rate. If you, for example, get a, get a loan for an apartment and you need to pay like 10%, not many people would like to get a loan. This means that not very people will have buying power because they don't have access to credit instruments. This means that people are going to reduce their spending. That reflects to a currency. When the interest rates are low, this means that the currency is appreciating because since interest rates are low, people have access to credit instruments and they spend more money, which makes the currency cycle roll and roll and roll. So, Interest rates are low, people spend a lot, currency goes high. Like over here, interest rates are high, currency increases because people don't spend that much. All right, now let's get back to our presentation again. I just wanted to show you quickly how economic situations can reflect currencies. All right, now I need to tell you something about the MetaTrader for Forex trading platform. This is the most used retail forex trading platform in trading. And it is used, I don't want to say by all brokers, because uh, there is probably a broker that I don't know of that is not using this platform. But by most of the brokers, this is like the most used platform. And most of the broker totally rely on this platform. And why is this? Why are traders using it so much? Because it is accessible and it is very easy to use. As you saw, this is what I was using currently, that exact platform. It is very rich on indicators. As you saw, I very easily drew some lines, some channels, some support and resistance levels. Also, this platform supports custom integration, meaning that if you are willing to bring your forex trading to the next level and to learn some basic programming stuff, you will be able to code into the platform and create your own trading indicators or your own trading system that will apply automatically without your presence. That will, for example, have certain entry conditions on the chart and certain entry per exit parameters on the chart. And when you click the start buttons, simply your robot will implement this strategy by itself. And this is all allowed by the MetaTrader for trading platform. This is why there are a lot of programmers that uh, deal with building strategies and indicators because this is extremely hot nowadays and traders rely on automatic trading a lot. Also, the MetaTrader 4 platform allows modifications of existing indicators. For example, the platform has built-in indicators that you can geek into. You simply open the respective folder, you open the coding file of the 
platform and if you know the language which is called MQL4 language you will be able to code into the indicator and to modify it according to your needs. Now let me show you some practical examples again. Going back to the platform, I showed you, for example, this is where you select a, a horizontal line that you can move up and down. Take a look, I just discovered another resistance level over here. You see, one top, second top, third top, price drops, then the price breaks the resistance level and increases. Pretty logical. Then I notice another trend. Here it is. Bottom, second bottom, third bottom, fourth bottom, fifth bottom. I selected the trend line from the next box over here. Draw a trend line. Whoop, and you stretch. Simple. You can also make it look like a ray. You go to the properties, ray. Here it is. Now you have a ray. But that is totally up to you which one you're going to use. I prefer the trend line and not the ray. You can also draw a channel on the chart just let me let me find something like a channeling behavior that I will be able to to demonstrate you yeah this one for example you take the high take the low of the channel then you double click the lower level of the channel and you can readjust the lower level that it contains the price action in a better way and now you have visualized a channel on the chart and I'm gonna do it in a brighter color so you'll be able to see it like in a better way and I will even do it thicker for you. Here it is. Now you're, you're able to see it in a better way, probably. Here it is. This is how you draw a channel from the next level. Now I will add some indicators on the chart. For example, I'm going to add a volume indicator at the bottom of the chart. Whoop, here it is. Simply going to insert indicators. Then you choose what type of indicators you want. Go to volume volume. Here it is. Now I have a couple, but I don't need a couple. I need only one. And now you have the trading volume and you see at what time the trading volume of a currency pair is higher. Notice, like let's say, let me give you a proper example of the trading volume. Yeah. Notice over here, the volume here is like relatively, no, let me, let me use the, the line. The volume over here is relatively low, here it is. I mean, it increases that from time to time, but it is generally is very low. However, suddenly the volume increases sharply. <laughs> over here, it increases, a lot of people start trading and you see that the Forex pair is creating a very big move in bearish direction, meaning that it is decreasing. Here it is, on high trading volume. Then the market calms down, the trading volume gets low again, and the forex pair gets calm too. Here it is. Then we see that the price creates another, there is another peak in the trading volume that lasts like for a little bit longer. And the price, uh, let me zoom this in. Here it is. And since there is an increase over here in the trading volume, the price creates another drop. Meaning that when the volume is high, the Forex pair start trending. When the volume is low, we rather look at sideways price move, meaning that the price is not very dynamic and these are not very good hours to trade, don't you think? Here it is. I will now show you a smaller chart to show you how the volume indicator works like. Yeah, here it is. Quiet market, low volume. There are a couple moves over here. However, the, the Forex pair is like more like moving sideways. Here it is. Suddenly, the volume starts increasing sharply. At the same time, the price starts moving sharply. Here it is. And this is how it works. And there are like many, many other Forex indicators that you can add to your chart. But since we don't have time for all of them, I will end up with the volume indicator and I'll get back to the presentation. Maybe in future I can create another free webinar explaining some of the Forex indicators. All right.
And now I will tell you some stuff about your education in Forex trading and why it is very important. First of all, I would like to share one thing with you. 95% of the Forex traders actually lose money. And there are four basic reasons about this. There are four reasons why traders lose money. The first is they have very bad strategy. The second is they have very bad risk management system. The third is they have very bad bankroll management conditions or rules or skills. And the fourth one is they have bad knowledge about their trading platform and they don't know how to use it. The thing is that uneducated Forex traders can simply wipe up an account in seconds. You can, you can simply lose like $10,000 in like 10 seconds, which is something you really want to avoid if you're dealing with the Forex market. And this is because Forex traders, beginner Forex traders, they don't know their risk limits and they simply risk more than they are capable of handling or they are taking like an impossible leverage to handle because there are also brokers that can offer you a leverage not 1 to 50 but 1 to 1500 this means that if the price creates a, a simple tick you lose like ten thousand dollars in second and you really want to avoid this this is why education is very important and you should invest in your forex education before starting dealing with the forex market. You need to know everything about strategy, everything you can learn, everything about risk management, everything about bankroll management, and you need to uh, get familiar with the trading platform you're going to use, and this is most likely the MetaTrader 4 trading platform. The characteristics of a good trading academy is to provide high quality trading courses, that responds to risk management strategies, bankroll management, strategy building, and also platform education. Also, a good trading academy will offer you webinars, webinars and live sessions where they will personally educate you and you'll be able to ask your questions. Also, a good trading academy, Forex Trading Academy, will be very user-friendly and will have a very friendly interface that you'll be able to deal with. Also, the good Forex academies offer private communities where their members are able to interact with, their, with each other and to share their strategies, to communicate, and to keep things social. Because if you want to bring Forex trading to the next level, you should keep this social. Because when people are talking about something, soon or later, they all reach the truth about it. And this is where you can share your strategy, your analysis, uh, your chart drawings, your trading system, your algorithmic trading approach, or your new Forex robot that you just built. And now I would like to meet you with our academy, which is called Forex Ball Trading Academy, where we have seven courses on Forex trading. The most recent one we launched was the Forex Strategy Building course, where you can master the art of creating a following Forex strategy. We also have six other courses that are big courses which are about forex trading complete A to Z, meaning that we can totally teach you to everything in forex trading from scratch. That is basically the most important thing you need to do when you start your journey in the forex trading career. We have another course on MetaTrader 4 that will tell you how to deal with the platform and it will learn you on some advanced practices and you will be able to bring your learning to the next level. We have a money management course that will tell you how to successfully and safely use your bankroll and how to stay out of danger where you trade. Our algorithmic trading course in Forex is very suitable for people that are willing to start coding on the MetaTrader 4 platform using the MQL language I mentioned about. Notice that this course is totally friendly for beginners and it is not necessary to be uh, like a programmer or a geek or a genius to deal with this course. It is absolutely for beginners and it is suitable for everyone. We have another course where we'll learn you, we'll teach you how to build your first Forex robot that will trade instead of you. And then we have another course on Forex DPS servers, which is a way to implement very, very like a low latency Forex trades because when you, when you open a trade, 
it takes time, like maybe it could take a second or a two until it reaches the global financial market. If you're using a VPS server, opening a trade almost takes no time. It takes milli, milli, milli seconds, which is very important because for two seconds the price can change. And it is very important that you are familiar with this option too. So, I would like to tell you something about our top features. So, if you are registered for our membership program, you will be getting two live webinars per month. And this is like without the free webinar we will be creating every month. So this month we conducted two live webinars. One was about Forex programming and the other one was about uh, Fibonacci numbers and the psychological factor in Forex trading. Also, our membership will give you full access to our full 100% webinar trading database. So we have a database of more than 20 webinars which you will have access to. Absolutely, and this will be totally included in your plan. Also, if you're a member of our community, you will have access to our private trading community, meaning that you will be, you will be provided access to a separate group where all of our trading members participate. These are like more than 300 people currently. All of them participate, they share their trading strategies, They're, they totally exchange information constantly about the financial markets, they, uh, you know, they exchange events, etc., etc. Also, our Forex mentors are located over there and they are, will be totally at your service to help you with whatever you need. Also, the other, our top feature is that we have a very dynamic trading block where we publish Every week we publish a brand new blog post that will improve totally your understanding for the financial markets. And also we publish live trading examples that are videos where our Forex mentors simply shoot successful trades and they share, you, share them with you. They show you how to open trades, how to close trades, how the analysis is performed and how the decision is made based, based on this analysis. Also, I would like to say that in our private trading community, our Forex mentors from time to time create live sessions where they share their screens and they analyze charts with all the members uh, in the group. And also the members are totally free in real time to ask about, uh, about a particular chart that they need to be analyzed and they all go through these charts and they share their ideas and exchange experience which is probably the most important thing in, in Forex trading to keep things social and to be able to get the information on time. Now, I would like to tell you something. After we finish this webinar, first, uh, I, will upload, uh, I will upload today the webinar at our blog and you will be able to see it for free or use it as a cheat sheet. Our blog will be found at forexvolt.com slash blog. Uh, and then I will send an email to all of you that participated in this webinar where uh, I will share the link with the recording and also I will send you a special promotion for our trading academy so if you're, if you're willing to start learning Forex trading and to join the world of the Forex market and the currency markets if you want to deal with charts we will give you a very nice opportunity to start your trading education which is probably the most important thing in Forex trading because you need to be educated. Uneducated people in Forex, they, they fail. That is the truth. And as I already told you, 95% of the Forex traders fail. You really want to avoid this. And a very good way to start your career in Forex trading is by joining an academy that will teach you step by step from scratch how to deal with financial markets and how to approach trading situations, strategies, uh, technical analysis, fundamental analysis, how to build indicators, how to use indicators then, et cetera, et cetera. And I believe that the Forex Vault Academy will find you very well in need. So now I will leave a few, I will leave you guys to ask your questions because I, I, I assume that you might be having some questions. So feel free to use the, the question section or the chat now to ask your questions because I assume that maybe there are a lot of stuff that you did not understand but this is totally normal since you're beginners. 
and uh, you will need assistance and uh, help with understanding some of the information. So do not hesitate to ask me a question about the presentation. I can get back to the slides or I can simply pop up my chart again. Feel free to ask me some questions. I'm totally there for you. All right. I assume that maybe some of you guys have questions. Maybe Rex or Paul or maybe Korosh. Maybe somebody has a question about something. If you guys are having questions, feel free to ask your questions now. I'll be happy to answer. If you don't have any questions, I will simply, uh, until you write your questions or until you think about your questions, I will like launch a poll and I will ask you to vote uh, if you like this webinar or not, where uh, one is for, wow, it was horrible, I don't like it, and five is it was very awesome. So I'm launching the, the poll now, and I will leave it for one minute until you all vote. I will be grateful if you vote on this for me. So feel free to use the poll to vote. In the meantime, while you're voting, think about a question you want to ask me, and I will be like happy to answer your question about forex trading and about the forex market. And uh, maybe you will need some assistance with uh, deciding what do you want to do in future. I will be, I will be grateful to answer your question. All right, now I will be finishing the poll, and I just got a question from Rex. Thank you for the question, Rex. Now I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna read it loudly. All right, the poll is already done. All right, so Rex is asking, coming from a developing country, I hear you talking about a lot of dollars. How can I efficiently participate then to build knowledge and empowerment? No, actually, Rex, you don't need like a fortune to start trading on the forex market. Actually, a lot of uh, the forex brokers, they nowadays they offer like micro accounts where you can start from like uh, you can even start an account like with hundred dollars, which is not that much. But uh, since you're not like uh, your bankroll is not high, after for example, after a leverage of one to hundred you will be having a total buying power of $10,000. And since, for example, let's say you invest like 50% of your buying power, this will be like $5,000. But you will be able to invest this $5,000 with only having $100 deposited in your account. So it is not necessarily to, to, like to, to have like thousands, thousands of dollars in order to be able to start successfully on the, on the forex market. However, since you're like... Uh, willing uh, to start with a smaller amount, you should be prepared that your profits in, in case of success will not be high as well. So the, the examples I gave with the $10,000 account, these are just samples. Don't take this like a 100% like a uh, pure thing or stuff because this is not the only option you have when you're trading on the market. Some people trade with millions or billions, other people trade with hundreds. So you can pretty much be successful with uh, less of a capital. And in my opinion, for example, a decent uh, success, not success rate, a decent monthly profit that you can do uh, from Forex trading is like between 5 and 10%. Meaning that, for example, uh, if you manage to grow your account with 5% per month, this is a lot. This is a huge thing, by the way. I mean, the first month you're not going to be like the first month you're not going to be that big, but for example, let's say you start with $1,000, which is a decent amount to start. This means that uh, that 5% uh, increase will bring you $50, you know? And then the next month when you do another 
five percent, you're going to do like a, you're going to do another seventy-five dollars, and then when you do another zero point five percent increase, then you're going to do like more than hundred dollars, etc., etc., and then for like a, if you manage to grow consistently with five or even ten percent, you will be able to reach very very good results after the twelve month, in my opinion. But you need to be consistent and you need to stick. Uh, stick closely to your trading strategy. You should never cheat your trading strategy. Don't do this because uh, that will never like <laughs> that will never play you like a, a good trick. Never, never cheat your strategy. But uh, don't think of a forex trading uh, like something you're gonna get a millionaire like overnight. That is totally not true. <laughs> forex trading is a regular job where you get up in the morning, you go into your office not necessarily to be like an outside office, it could be a home office like, like mine. And um, you pretty much start working, start trading the markets, and then when the markets close, you finish your trading day. Now let me turn on my camera so I'll be more persuasive when I talk. A lot of people, a lot of people think that when they start trading Forex, they will become millionaires. That is totally not true. I mean, uh, you need to trade like for years and years until you and you reach that million. And as I said already, 95% of the people lose money. But if you're profitable, if you're like a motivated and a dedicated person who is not one of these 95%, at least in the other 5%, then in like in in future, you will prove that your trading strategy brings success and you can expand your bankroll from time to time. Which is like uh, the basic thing in Forex trading is to bring consistent monthly profit that's what it is and then when this when your bankroll grows and grows and grows and grows your profits are higher and higher so if you have more questions feel free to ask I would I would love to explain more stuff about forex training maybe some of the other guys have questions too maybe Paul or maybe Cole Roche or maybe Rex has another question. I'm here for you guys, so if you want to ask something, do not hesitate. I will be happy to respond to all of you. And if you guys you don't have questions, I will uh, I will simply end this webinar. Also, I would like to thank you that uh, you were part of this webinar. The webinar is recorded, so I will put it like I will put it live on our website at forexbowl.com slash blog. You will be able to find the webinar over there and you'll be able to watch it for free over and over again as many times you want. So thank you very much again for being part of this webinar. This was Damien from forexbowl.com. Uh, looking forward to see you in our trading academy or visiting our blog. Uh, also stay tuned for your email. Until the end of the day, I'll send you an email with the link to the webinar recording as well as to instructions how to subscribe for our trading academy, I will also give you a promotion. So uh, this will be a very nice way to start your forex trading career. Also, if you subscribe to our program, you will be let into our private group. Also, we have a free forum at forexbowl.com slash forum, so you can check this one too. So thank you very much again for participating in this webinar. I was Damien for forexbowl.com. It was a total pleasure for me, and I wish you make a lot of money on the financial market. Bye-bye.